Okay, hi there, and uh, welcome to a short video on housing affordability, uh, preparation for synoptic economics questions. The housing market is a tremendous example of, of a topic which is uh, highly synoptic in nature, micro and macro factors affecting it. Housing affordability is hugely topical. In 2018, on average, somebody in a full-time job would be paying just under eight times their earnings from work if they wanted to buy a home in England and Wales. And affordable housing to buy or rent is a persistent problem for many towns and cities in the UK. Just in London alone, well over two million people now rent their homes, but the proportion of their income going on rent has been rising. Uh, you nearly always get a data response question as context for your answer. This chart shows the uh, number of percentage of income, sorry, of 22 to 29 year olds uh, that goes on rent for a one bedroomed property. Look at the dark colours in, in the centre of London there with with uh, rents well over half the, uh, the income of a 22 to 29 year old. High in other cities, although affordable probably in other cities uh, as this chart shows. We'll take a look at this question, assess the micro and macroeconomic factors that influence housing affordability in the UK. Housing affordability, of course, can be measured in various ways. One is house price to income ratios. You can take the mean or the medium there. You, if you're looking at the rented sector, it's the monthly rent as a proportion of medium disposable income uh, or the proportion of income generally spent on housing. So there's various ways you can measure affordability essentially is what percentage of your economic resources, your income, do you have to commit if you want to be able to afford to buy or rent a property. Now, with a synoptic paper, you're looking to bring both micro and macro factors into your discussion. And the assessment is to say, well, which do you think is probably most important in the short term or the medium term or the long term? Here are some of the key micro influences on housing affordability. One is the price aspects, uh, the, the extent to which uh, uh, affordability is determined by the, the prices of new homes. So there's a pretty high average price of new homes. Typically, for example, housing developers are building or favour luxury versus affordable homes. And if there is a skew towards luxury properties, then that's obviously going to drive the average price up. Another, another micro factor affecting affordability is output. The extent to which housing supply is limited. Are we building enough new homes? Uh, is the supply elasticity of homes pretty low? What about the cost of land? The high cost of land restricting possibly the number of new homes being built. Profitability affects uh, housing affordability. The extent to which, for example, construction companies might want to keep supplies scarce. Indeed, maybe not even build sufficient new homes to maintain high prices and achieve higher profits. The structure of the market in house building will impact on, on the house prices. The extent to which, for example, you have an oligopolistic house building industry with limited competition, which keeps prices high. Economic efficiency can affect housing affordability. If we have limited dynamic efficiency, uh, innovation in house building, if we have limited productive efficiency, again, those factors can keep prices high. Really interesting aspect in many cities in recent times has been the growth of Airbnb, the uh, the platform for letting out property for tourists and other visitors. Some people are claiming that the, the rapid growth of Airbnb has reduced the supply of long-term rented property. People with homes deciding to go for short-term lets, including the Airbnb platform, and that reduces the number of homes available for long-term tenants driving the price up. And then there's the wider issue, if you like, the systemic issue of market failure. Uh, is there, Has there been a failure to build enough affordable homes? Is that government failure as well as market failure? Uh, is the price mechanism in the housing market working efficiently? So choose your micro factors, develop one in, in some detail. Uh, for example, the structure of the market or the, or the impact of, of low elasticity of supply. It's important to be able to use micro analysis diagrams here. Uh, just take a scenario and build a diagram to support your analysis. In this diagram, I've assumed that the demand for homes in the rented sector is going up. So my focus here is rented housing. Demand is increasing, for example, population growth into, into London and other cities. 
shifting the demand curve out from D1 to D2. But then I've also built into my analysis diagram the possible Airbnb effect, where if Airbnb's growth is reducing the supply of long-term homes for rented property, that again can drive up uh, there's a steep rise in the cost of rented housing. When you get to macro influences, you need to just take a bigger picture. Think about the whole economy. Uh, what are the key macroeconomic influences on housing affordability? Well, fundamentally, of course, it'll be the cost of a mortgage loan. And that's part of monetary policy. So mortgage interest rates uh, will affect um, the affordability of homes. Uh, likewise, a macro factor will be the financial sector more broadly. And in particular, the willingness and the ability of mortgage lenders to, to give out loans. There could be, for example, limits on the loan to valuation ratios. Real incomes and household savings make a big difference at a macro level. So most people now need to build up savings to, uh, to pay or to build up for a mortgage deposit. Well, that depends on their savings ratio, depends on uh, the real incomes of people in work. And recent times, of course, real incomes are being squeezed. Household savings have been low, making it much harder to get enough money for a deposit. People having to rely, for example, on the bank of mum and dad to get them on the housing ladder. Another big macro factor would be economic growth, rate of unemployment in the labour market. Uh, in theory, of course, growth creates uh, more incomes, more people in work, and therefore housing affordability should improve. But uh, if, if demand is growing for housing, that forces prices up and can offset as a factor. Fiscal policy can have a big effect on the housing market, in particular uh, government assistance to home buyers, the help to buy scheme, which we'll talk about in a second. The exchange rate is a macro factor affecting the housing market on the supply side in particular. So a fall in the pound, depreciation of sterling would increase the cost of imported raw materials and components, imported steel and cement and what have you. And that could cause house prices to go up and make housing less affordable. So again, in an exam question, you choose your macroeconomic influence and develop a chain of reasoning explaining that. Help to buy is an important government intervention just to be aware of. It's an example of fiscal policy affecting the housing market. So the government's offering help to buy equity loans where the government will lend you uh, outside of London up to 20% of the cost of a newly built home. So let's say they'll, the lender will give you a 75% mortgage. Uh, the government will give you 20% of, of a loan there. That means you need just a 5% cash deposit to be able to buy the house. It's an interest-free loan for the first five years, but then the rate of interest starts to kick in. Crucially, it only applies to a new build home. And it's really designed, if you like, to stimulate new house building and increase effective demand through affordability. But critics argue that what it's done essentially is drive up demand. Uh, it hasn't necessarily been a very big supply side response in terms of new homes being built. So there we go. There's a quick video on some of the micro and macro influences on housing affordability. There'll be a separate video coming up in the next, uh, next session on micro and macro policies designed to improve housing affordability. Don't forget, whenever we say micro and macro, we're thinking in a synoptic way.